Welcome back. This week we're going to go with the Brazilian. Um, we're going to do this one in a little bit of a unique color combination. Um, I started doing this and I have a few ideas on a couple other colors that I would like to try and see how it goes. Um, but I started doing this um, with the olive. I kind of did a little transition between like a brown, a brown olive and then to a straight olive. Um, I like the way that it looked. I like the way that it turned out. So I moved that along a little bit and this one's going to be in a transition from a black to gray to white. And like I said, there's a few other ideas that I have out there on this one. But this is a good overall pattern and uh, like I said, we're going to highlight a new color here with the multiple camera angles. So we're going to get this one out of the vise and start off with an MFC 7050. This is a size 6. The back hook's about as simple as you can make it. Two stacks of marabou, a couple turns of polar chenille, and you're good to go. Um, this one is the younger version, if you will, of the landing strip. So I took a little bit of bulk out of the back, it allowed, the, it allowed it to move around a lot more, it allowed it to whip around a lot more I should say, and uh, scaled the hooks down a little bit, it's not quite as heavy, that, uh, that landing strip is phenomenal though for some dirty water, it really is. So I'll get this tied in and like I said two stacks of marabou all we're going to do is palmer these ones I'm going to half hitch right there this is a really good plume I should have probably kept that one for the front but that's all right we're going to start at the halfway point right here have that tied in um, grab my hackle pliers here I like to do these more so with the brush but I figured not everybody's spinning up marabou brushes here so may as well go the old school way and just palmer the marabou so I'm just gonna open loop that right to the front get a couple of good wraps in through there and then that should should do it right there and now I'm just going to peel all of this back, make sure I tie that off first and then bust this piece off. And then I'm going to take this, like I said, peeling this stuff back. And then I'm going to go right over top of this, probably halfway back to where I tied it in. That's just going to secure it a little bit more. If you get a tooth in there, it's not going to rip anything up. And ruin the back half of your fly. Now I'm going to go, this is some silver UV polar and like I said I'm probably going to do about two turns on this and that's going to be it. Let me see here. There we go. Tie this in just the cotton section right there. That way I'm not creating any extra bulk move that forward just a touch and then like I said I'm gonna do about two turns of this just enough to get a little bit of internal flash in this tail section so I'm gonna go one two let's see if I like that I might do a third yeah I'm gonna give it a third there we go just a little bit of flash adding into that back section of this fly and then we'll go ahead and trim this off get it out of our way peel all of this stuff back and make one or two wraps back that portion there we go get those fibers moving into the back and then after we get this section on there it's really gonna it's really going to uh, show up nicely once this thing's wet 
try and find another good plume here. There's a, eh, it's going to be a little sparse. Yeah, that one's going to be a little sparse. I want something that's a little bit webbier. That looks pretty good right there. And we'll get that white out of the way. Get that in. Get a couple of good secure wraps on this. And then we're just going to take it to the front. Half hitch once again. Get out of there. And nothing new on this section. Get your first wrap in there, make sure that it's going to be coming back and you're not going to be trapping that in there. Just peel all those fibers back as you go. Work your way right up to the front. There we go, that looks pretty good. Right up to the eye, we're going to go ahead and tie off on that one. Get that out of our way. Then I'm going to go back about four or five wraps toward the tail of the hook, or toward the hook point, I should say, and just secure that up. Good, and whip finish and your back half's complete. Pretty simple, about as simple as it gets for tying streamers. So now we have that out of our, we got our thread out of there. I'm just going to peel these fibers back a little bit. Got one or two sticking. There we go. Peel those back. We're going to throw in our articulation wire, same as always, uh, 19 strand beetle on. And just one bead on this one. Move that up. Just gonna pinch that, put that right in place. And then the front hook on this one is gonna be an MFC 7008. This is a size six as well. This is a 4X long. Um, the back hook was a 3X. Um, let me see, we'll just get our wire tied in here. back to the barb of the hook and I'm going to come back. Actually I want to tie in my eyes first. So I'm just going to make a loop around that, get my eyes secured. This color combination by the way is it is a great whitefish imitation. If you want to do this a little bit bigger, um, you know, for some of the bigger patterns and not have it a, a landing strip to where there's a whole bulk in the back, um, you can either lengthen your hooks out or throw a shank in the middle and have um, two articulation points. Um, I've met, been meaning to, to mess around with that a little bit and see. I'm gonna, I might do one here before we go out to the water next and see how it goes. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue on this. Just a little bit of zap. I can tell that my eyes are off a little. There we go. Make sure that they're even side to side. Everything looks pretty good. Now we're going to throw in this back section here. And get our wire all lined up. A couple of loose wraps till I make sure that my 
length is how I want it here. Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten that up, run this to the front. It's nice even wraps. And then, as always, double my wire over. Bring that back around. And just have everything nice and secure right there. And before I put this back hook in my thumb, I'm going to get it in and secure back there in that clip. And the piece wanting to stick there. All right, now we're going to transit transition over to some gray. I'm going to do, depending on how good of a plume I can get here, I'm going to do one to two plumes of gray, and it's looking like I'm going to have to do two because these look pretty well picked through here. Yeah, we'll wind up doing two on this one. This is where time with those brushes saves just a ton of time. You don't have to peel any fibers back, you don't have to do anything, you just tie in the wire, wrap, and then you're done. No tying in multiples, you just eyeball it. Yep, that's about how long I want that gray section to be, and then you just rip right through it. But, we're going to do this the old school way. There we go. Same as before, just kind of open loop that up there. Uh, just one wrap right in front of the next. You don't have to really worry about spacing too much. The only thing I really worry about when I'm doing this is that I'm just not trapping any fibers with my next wraps. I want everything to be freed up and able to uh, be unimpeded. So now I'm just working this to the back. I'm going to go about to the point of my hook, maybe a little bit in front of it, a little bit in front of the point of that hook. And I'm going to tie in a second gray. I'm going to try to use all of this one here. This is pretty damn sparse. But we'll try and use all of this one and fill it out a little bit. Same thing on this one. Trying to grab a good section here. Making sure that the feathers face in the correct direction there, your package side or your shiny side, however you depend on however you decide to look at it, is facing the front of the hook right there. And you can see there's that natural curve to where it's heading back toward the tail. If you tied it in opposite, obviously your your curve would be going to the front and it would have a lot better of a chance at trapping those fibers as you go through it. So now we'll take this about halfway back. Halfway back the length of the hook that is. That's where you're thread should wind up and then I'm going to throw in once again just two wraps here two to three wraps depending on how well I get this to tie in for me a little bit more internal flash one two I'm going to leave it at two. That looks pretty good. Like I said, this is just real subtle. 
this flash that's in here. If you want to, you could just run flashaboo back there, whatever you decide. Um, I like going with that UV puller. I just like the way that it looks a lot better. Uh, it's junk. All right, now that we're gonna add a little bit of bulk to this fly, with the landing strip, I had this on both the front and back hook. This is just some Temple Fox right here. And I'm going to tie this in reverse. Clean that up a little bit. Actually, we're not going to reverse tie it on this one. This one's a little bit... This is the smaller version. We're not going to reverse tie it. I just want to get an idea. And the main thing that this does right here, this just creates a little bit of extra bulk. So when the water hits all of this marabou, it doesn't sink down entirely. This fox keeps a little bit of bulk in there. So I'm going to run this back to about where my bead is on the back hook. I'm going to cut this at an angle and then tie this in right in front of that flashaboo. Make sure that your material is going to be right on the center of your hook. Center of the top of the hook, I should say. Get over there. Damn it. There we go. Now we're going to go with the final piece of marabou. May have to do two on this one as well. We'll see. But we're going to take some black. I'm going to try and find a good piece here. This black tends to be a lot more sparse than a lot of other colors for some reason. That one, nope, too thick of a stem. Too thick of a stem. Let's go with that one there. That looks like it might make it in one. Not likely. Probably have to do two on this one. So we'll get that tied in here. Half hitch once again. And then we're just going to palmer this black up to the front. Didn't like the way that was sitting. There we go. There we go. Alright. I'm going to see here once I peel that back. I think I'm going to be pretty happy with that actually. Peel this back just a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's sitting. I don't want that black to be overpowering uh, with the marabou. I just like it to bleed back into that white a little bit, over the gray and a little bit into that white. And it really makes a neat little profile. And when it's in the water and it's wet, this thing has a really neat look to it. There's a really nice transition throughout the entirety of the pattern. So now I'm going to take just some Senyo's laser dub and we're going to build a head on this. I'm going to get one wrap or one piece right behind the eyes. Same thing on the bottom. When you're working with this stuff, if you've watched on the Rainbow Riff or anything else that uses these laser dub heads, make sure you work this stuff in your hands. Just get it to where it's nice and even, and then when you pull right in the center, it's not moving on you. 
If you take it right out of the package and tie it in, you're going to lose the majority, if not all of it. Now I want to take one. Oh, let's see. I'm going to touch that thread up. The majority of it's going to get covered, but I always like to just touch that up for some reason. Like I said, the majority of it's going to get covered up. But may as well. Same thing. I'm going right in front of the eyes. I'm going to go one, two wraps in front of it and then pull down tight. Get a couple more wraps. Just even everything up there. That way we've got some thread now in front going up to the eye. That way you know when we throw this on there we're not going on the bare hook and it'll it'll grab a little bit more now we got a piece on the bottom one two pull tight and then we're going to work our way right to the very front where i'm going to throw one more stack on the top i think i'm going to leave the bottom go I don't like getting a ton of this laser dub in the head. Um, when I first started tying them, the, the error that I made more so than not was I just put way too much laser dub in there and it wound up just being too heavy for one and two it was really tough to control where that laser dub was going. It would, it would mesh all around the eyes and everything and it would just make a really difficult um, pattern to keep clean I would say so now we're just going to clean this up a little bit I'm going to take a few brushes through with with the comb there and then I'm just going to trim this just give a nice overall shape to this just trimming some of the long stuff same thing on the bottom. I just want to give this a quick trim, try not to get my marabou. And I'm going to go just a nice rounded cut right through there. Now all that stuff's going to peel back once it gets wet. And that's going to have that transition going all the way back for you where it's going to go from that black to the gray to the white and like I said when this thing's in the water it really makes a really neat impression and the way that it swims and everything it's a it's a great whitefish imitation it really is it doesn't look like it here on the vise but once you see this thing swimming and once it's in the water it just has those black streaks that run into that lighter color and uh, really has a nice profile to it as well but that's going to do it for this fly, minus a little bit of color on my thread. That'll do it, and that is the Brazilian. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, as always, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next Wednesday.